When you collect trolls, it's like, why trolls? And all the people I pooled and myself, it's something about the eyes and something about the hair. Me personally, I believe it goes much deeper that troll dolls represent some universal concepts of kindness, goodness, and cooperation. The majority of them are, are made, you know, with their hands out, like they're hugging. You know, that, that's a kind of a pretty positive message to put out there, especially with, you know, a lot of toys, you know, a lot of different messages going out, but the trolls are all about happiness and loving one another. In the 1950s, a fellow in Denmark, he was a wood handyman and he crafted this iconic image of a troll doll. So this iconic image went viral. So these iconic dolls copied in many different variations with more pointed ears. They have certain characteristics you can recognize them by. They have four fingers, four toes. They have, the, of course, the big ears and big noses. And the original ones had tails, which I don't have one here, because those were really expensive and I'm too cheap to buy the really expensive and rare ones. When I started this project, I'd managed to amass about 2,000 trolls. And that was because I had a significant other, and he went out and started buying collections of trolls, three or four hundred at a time. So that's why the numbers jumped. Now I've amassed over 40,000 pieces, trolls, troll dolls, and troll memorabilia. And the interesting phenomenon is that they continue to roll in on a fairly regular basis of donations. The lady in Spain likes to make her own custom trolls. She did the tiniest, tiniest ones, like less than half an inch. A lot of folk artists go out and get natural materials, pine cones, there's pine cone trolls, wooden trolls, wax trolls, and then the Smoky Mountain trolls were created by Ken Arnsback. He immigrated here with his family, settled in the Smoky Mountains of Tennessee, went out in the woods, took a piece of wood and sisal, which is rope, and created these folk art trolls with big noses, long tails. Well, my favorite troll was one of the, uh, what I call primo trolls, one of the dom trolls, but it's the bigger size. So that was my first troll that I got that was the more rare and unusual and made in Europe. What I grew up and what I got into was the battle trolls. The ones that are kind of like a combination of a G.I. Joe, like a troll and maybe a, a turtle. All right, so you all ready to move on to this next room? Yeah. All right. Awesome. Very nostalgic in some ways. Very <laughs> cool. So many different varieties and different setups and a lot of the like dioramas and stuff upstairs are cool to look at and see the different pieces too. So. I like the fact that a lot of them are from like my era when I was younger and that was cool to see. discovered historic East Main Street in Alliance, Ohio is the cheapest commercial real estate. So we are entrepreneurs and going to do something with that and we thought an art district. We did a lot of research and you need a hook and a Guinness record is a good hook. And my husband had the bright idea to say, wow, you have enough troll dolls, we could get a Guinness record for the troll dolls and from there we'd have our hook. So we started with the Troll Museum, then we did Wisecrack's Comedy Escape Room. Mad Dog's Crazy Cat Cafe, where you pay to play with cats in a unique environment. And then in the last years, we've launched Stick Stones, Bones, and Magic, a metaphysical shop. And then we had two event centers. And so people come to visit quirky, unusual things. And that's how the trolls kind of took over. Part of the tourism is the Football Hall of Fame and the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. So we created our own Troll Hall of Fame with our wall of fame of custom troll dolls and a reconstruction of the Benson Stadium. But we have a bunch of unique custom troll dolls as well as the franchised teams all had troll dolls. That was one of the big sellers in the 90s was get a troll doll with your team spirit on it. And then the Rockin' Troll Hall of Fame where we have Dolly Parton who was just inducted. And at some point we're trying to get Justin Timberlake and uh, maybe Jimmy Fallon, because they're two good friends that laugh and joke and have Jimmy Fallon present Justin Timberlake, our induction into the Rockin' Troll Hall of Fame. 
So my background was mental health nursing, but I always knew that enjoyment and laughter is the best therapy. And so it's very enjoyable to, to, to work here and share my passion with the people and it inspires them to then go out and be creative and do things outside the box. You don't have to be mainstream. A lot of people get into thinking they have to do something mainstream and trolls are certainly not very mainstream. 